this video is just about uh, a few pieces of gear, mainly oriented around my current hunting rifle, um, and also a few bits of equipment that I've purchased for that rifle as well. Now, this rifle, it's, it's not a stalking rifle. It's not intended to be that. The purpose of, of this rifle is to be able to take game, mostly sandbar deer, uh, out to a distance, six, 700 meters maximum. Okay, so it's more likely to be shot from a prepared position after I carry it into that. Um, it's, it's my version, I guess, of what, of the mountain rifle concept a lot of people are going for, just maybe a little bit heavier weight rather than a lighter weight rifle. Um, so getting started on that, I have uh, covering it currently the low vis gear um, their mountain rifle cover, um, which is in the uh, ATAX IX camouflage or intermediate, I believe that stands for. Awesome camouflage pattern, but you know, the main thing is, is the cover, which is made in Melbourne again by Low Vis Gear. The muzzle end is reinforced, um, which is really nice. I'll move that across a bit so you can see it. It's uh, reinforced. It's like um, stitching webbing material. Um, again, just, just does a really good job of protecting the muzzle of the rifle. If I was to slide it across the butt, there is the same. So again, just a, another reinforced section on the rear. Um, it's held together by these toggles. So these toggles slot into elastic loops on the other side, and that's what does up the cover. Um, this is a 26 inch barreled rifle, so it's not a short rifle by any means. Fits in this cover perfectly. I don't think I'd want a longer rifle in there. And honestly, I don't think I'd want a taller rifle on it either. So yeah, that's the LVG uh, rifle cover. Really good bit of gear. But for now, I'll take the rifle out of that and we'll cast that aside. Again, really easy to get in and out, just slip these uh, toggles off. I find it easier to remove it from the butt end. Just pull this uh, tab, slides up and over. So this is my rifle. Um, there's nothing really special about this at all. Um, it's a Remington 700P. Um, 300 Winchester Magnum, 26 inch barrel, all factory, nothing I've really changed here. Um, added the MDT 20 MOA rail, Badger Ordnance Steel Rings, Bushnell LRHS scope. So I'll break this down into what I've done and then what I am going to do. So the, this rifle purchased from Cleaver Firearms, I have a really good deal on them at the time, um, and I believe they still do actually. These are only around $1,300. The other 700P models, over 2,000. Um, for some reason, the 300 wing mags, they're, they're pushing them out the door. So get on it if you're after a 300 wing mag, if this will su suit your purpose. Um, I've been really happy with this so far. I've had quite a few Remington 700s in the past, and I've still got one other in the safe. They had a bad rep for a while, um, no doubt, you know, deservedly in some circumstances, there were some issues. Um, I had one, had some issues, I had a 223, the 700 AAC SD, um, had all sorts of problems. The recoil lug was crooked, chain balls and cut correctly. Um, it just would not shoot, obviously, with those issues. So after a bit of uh, negotiation, managed to return that, had it replaced out with one that shot really well. Just wasn't into it. After that experience, so I ended up selling and moving on. Revisited Remington 700s a few years later um, when I got a really good deal on a uh, another 223, which I still have. It's one of the VSSF 2s um, with too many trigger and beautiful rifle. Made me reconsider Remingtons again. And I haven't been disappointed. I've, I've always been interested in the 700P models. They were, I guess, the, the main rifle that you saw around when I first got into precision rifles back in 
2008, 2009, it was really common to see 700Ps. They run out of 700P with, you know, Leopold Mark IV bases and rings and then, you know, your Leopold Mark IV scope or the SWFASS scope or whatever. It's, it's very, just a sort of classic precision rifle thing for me because I guess that's the era that I started in. Um, so I've always wanted one of these 700Ps um, and I haven't been disappointed so far. It's, it's, it's an accurate rifle. The loads I've been developing for it, uh, using the 230 grain uh, Berger tactical projectile, um, uh, have just been really accurate, really, really impressive. Um, can't say enough about that. The, the gripes that I've had with the actual rifle itself so far have been all standard stuff. So the trigger's quite heavy. Um, it's, it's a really crisp, nice trigger. These rifles don't have the new X Mark Pro trigger in it, which to me is a good thing because I really don't like that trigger. I know they can be worked to be pretty decent triggers. These triggers uh, in the 700Ps are a different one, the, the older um, style design. Um, just a much nicer trigger in my opinion, although in this case just a little bit heavier for my liking. Um, the stock, standard HS Precision stock, aluminium backbone in it. Um, not much to say about that really. There's nothing really that can go wrong there. The first thing that I want to change that I haven't changed yet is the floor plate. So I've got the standard Remington alloy floor plate. They're just a bit flimsy in my opinion. Again, uh, I haven't had any issues with feed or function or anything like that. So it's kind of just a, a nitpicky thing that they just feel like they're made out of some sort of crappy pot metal and... You know, you drop that on a rock or not that you would, but you have an impact on something, you could easily damage that. Um, and you can just tell by, by the feel of it that it's quite flimsy. Um, so I will be going to another floor plate, but I'll still be sticking with the BDL design. I don't want a DBM for this uh, particular rifle. It's just unnecessary. Um, the trigger I'll be getting lightened up slightly. Um, I'd like my triggers to be around two pounds. I know being in Australia, I should speak metric, but unfortunately I, I, I judge my triggers in pounds and that's, uh, that's about where I like them. Um, moving back from the, uh, the trigger, see one thing I've added at the rear here is just a stock pack. I like them on all of my conventionally stocked rifles. I, I just... That, that extra utility of having some way to stick a few Allen keys or, or bits and pieces, whatever you need to keep your rifle running, whether it's lens cloths, that sort of stuff. I just I just like having them on there, but also it gives you a little bit of a cheek rise and a more comfortable, grippier sort of spot to rest your head on. So, you know, it's a, it's a good little addition. That sling here, it's a padded sling. I got this from Triad Tactical, I believe it's a tab gear sling, or oh, my bad triad sling. One way or another, you'll find it on Triad Tactical's website, that's a padded sling. Um, the reason why I've gone with a padded sling rather than a shooting sling is just because if I am carrying this rifle for extended periods, I want something a bit more comfortable. Uh, I do normally like to have shooting slings on all my rifles. It's just unlikely that I'm going to shoot this rifle slung. I might change my mind on that, but for now I think this is an appropriate sling to have on this rifle. Um, MDT over the last couple of years have been coming out with really high quality accessories and that's why for me it was an easy choice for me to choose, to go with the MDT 20 MOA rail um, I like a lugged rail um, on the 300 wind mag I think a lugged rail is, is necessary um, I personally use them on any rifle that I can so even 308s, 223s, whatever, if I can have a lugged rail, I'll get a lugged rail. I've had um, the unfortunate experience of having scope mounting screws or the base mounting screws shear during a match. Um, on a Remington 700, it was one of those short barrel 16 and a half inch things. Had just a, a generic uh, rail on it, no lug. Um, and the scope on it wasn't a particularly heavy scope. It was a 4 to 16 Vortex PST. Under recoil, those screws sheared. I believe with a recoil lug, it's probably less likely to occur. The other thing obviously you can do is open up the screw holes 8 to 40 um, rather than just the factory 6 for 48s. Um, again, 
that might be something that I do while it's in the shop getting the trigger adjusted. Um, and scope wise, I went with the Bushnell LRHS. Now I just think these scopes are a lot of bang for the buck. Um, they're a four and a half power that tops out at 18. Um, the quality in these scopes, I think, is just way above the asking price. And I'll, I'll do some close-ups on all of this uh, later and I'll talk a bit more about the scope. But personally, I just think that's an ex excellent scope for the money. They seem to have been phased out for the LRTS, which I'm sure is good too. You can still, at the time I'm making this video, get these LRHSs from a couple of shops for what seem to be like very good deals. So being 700p, the action finish is parkerized, bolts parkerized. I'm led to believe that's what the P actually means. There's a bit of, you know, back and forth on that one, whether the P is 700 police, blah, blah, blah. I think where that might come from is the 700 police sniper systems that were released in the 90s and early 2000s that were built off these rifles or were just these rifles with Leopold Mark IVs on them. Um, I do believe from what I've read that the P in 700P is actually 700 parkerized. Um, issue with the parkerized finish, even though I love it, it's great, um, is rust. So you just gotta feed it a bit of oil. Um, the parkerized finish actually helps defeat rust. It's, it's a good finish, but when you first get it, it's gonna be a bit dry and rust easily. You gotta feed them a bit of oil. Um, putting it away for a while, keep it oiled. Um, doesn't photograph well, obviously you might have a few issues for the video, but you know, it's better off to keep it well oiled um, than have rust appear. And I find the same actually with the Badger Ordnance rings. They're also steel, similar finish. Um, th they can rust again, just got to keep them oiled, keep them fed a bit of oil. It's not a bad thing. Um, I don't really have too much else to say about the rifle apart from the fact that it's, it's it's deceptively light and balanced for a heavy barreled rifle um comparatively to actual you know some of the builds you see out there for mountain rifles that are you know carbon fiber barrels or pencil thin barrels in carbon fiber stocks and things like that yeah this is just a heavy tactical rifle compared to those for me coming from the accuracy international platforms i mean it's a damn amount lighter than that um, and again, I'm not stalking with this rifle, whereas that application for mountain rifles, assuming you're stalking in the mountains, um, we don't really shoot that way. Uh, I do intend on that, but I have a different rifle in mind for that circumstance. Um, yeah, so one of the things you'll notice when you get one of these 700p rifles is the action is quite gritty when you first get it. And this one still has a bit of that, so... Now it's nice and smooth, like it runs in the, like you can hear that that's, that's smoothed up a lot, but definitely that, that takes quite a few cyclings of the bolt to get there. Um, the trigger, as I said, it's quite heavy, but it's got these ridges on the face of the trigger, which are quite nice. Um, some people prefer a, a smooth trigger and a flat trigger. I like a curved trigger that has grooves. Um, straightforward. Uh, I'll get the camera off and we'll have a look at this scope a bit closer. So Bushnell LRHS, it's uh, an illuminated G2 H reticle, so uh, that's the uh, one that they co-designed with Horace, I believe. Um, it's got capped windage, Exposed elevations, I'll just pull this off. The capped winch is, is actually an interesting design because to zero the scope, to reset it, um, I'll just dial it so you can hear that. So that's just normal. To reset the zero, you actually lift it up and spin it free. And then you find the zero again, drop it back down. Yeah, very interesting design. Easy to, and very fast to zero. I think it's pretty good. Elevation turret, zero stop, it's nice and wide, 10 mils per rev. There's no multi turn rev indicator apart from the lines underneath. The clicks on this are really nice. There's 
no mistaking when you make an adjustment. There's no play whatsoever, absolutely no wiggle in the turret. It's really tight. Um, takes a bit of force to turn the turret. Not overly so, just a nice amount. Zero to stop, stop dead at zero. Obviously you can set it so that it goes about five under. Parallax goes down to 50. Um, I actually think it might focus down a little bit less than 50. Again, the markings don't line up on any of these. Um, even my Schmidt and Bender or anything like that, I've, I've never had a scope where the, the parallax numbers actually correlate. Not a big deal. Should be checking for parallax anyway. Illuminated radical, it's got off positions between each click. Again, it's nice and solid, it can't really come on accidentally. And yeah, easy to use, battery cover under that side. Magnification ring on this is really smooth through its whole rotation. Takes a very moderate amount of effort and just well built. Um, came with the usual crappy Butler Creek flip up caps. It's pretty standard. So yeah, that's my hunting rifle as it stands at the moment. Um, it's more of a long range hunting rifle, I suppose you could say. Um, yeah, shooting the uh, Burger 230 grainers. Decent sized projectile. Still working on, uh, always working on low development, but yeah, in particular with these projectiles, but I've had pretty good results so far. Yeah, that's it. So any comments, any suggestions, um, please leave them below in the comments. Um, interested to see other people's rifles um, or what other people are using. But yeah, I'll uh, update it if I make any major changes to it. Hopefully, once COVID's over, actually get out and uh, get some footage using it.